In graph theory, the crossing number CR of a graph G is the lowest number of edge crossings of a plane drawing of the graph G. For instance, a graph is planar if and only if its crossing number is zero. The mathematical origin of the study of crossing numbers is in Turan's brick factory problem, in which Pal Turan asked to determine the crossing number of the complete bipartite graph KMN. However, the same problem of minimizing crossings was also considered in sociology at approximately the same time as Turan. In connection with the construction of sociograms, it continues to be of great importance in graph drawing. Without further qualification, the crossing number allows drawings in which the edges may be represented by arbitrary curves. The rectilinear crossing number requires all edges to be straight-line segments and may differ from the crossing number. In particular, the rectilinear crossing number of a complete graph is essentially the same as the minimum number of convex quadrilaterals determined by a set of n points in general position, closely related to the happy ending problem. History During World War II, Hungarian mathematician Pal Turan was forced to work in a brick factory, pushing wagon loads of bricks from kilns to storage sites. The factory had tracks from each kiln to each storage site, and the wagons were harder to push at the points where tracks crossed each other, from which Turan was led to ask his brick factory problem, what is the minimum possible number of crossings in a drawing of a complete bipartite graph? Zarinkovich attempted to solve Turan's brick factory problem, his proof contained an error. But he established a valid upper bound of for the crossing number of the complete bipartite graph KMN. The conjecture that this inequality is actually inequality is now known as Zarinkovich crossing number conjecture. The gap in the proof of the lower bound was not discovered until 11 years after publication, nearly simultaneously by Gerhard Ringel and Paul Kynan. The problem of determining the crossing number of the complete graph was first posed by Anthony Hill, and appears in print in 1960. Hill and his collaborator John Ernest were two constructionist artists fascinated by mathematics, who not only formulated this problem but also originated a conjectural upper bound for this crossing number, which Richard K. Guy published in 1960. Namely, the conjecture is that which gives values of 1, 3, 9, 18, 36, 60, 100, 150 for p equals 5, 12, c sequence in the OEIS. An independent formulation of the conjecture was made by Thomas L. Sarti in 1964. Sarti further verified that the upper bound is achieved for P10 and Pan and Richter showed that it also is achieved for P equals 11, 12. If only straight line segments are permitted, then one needs more crossings. The rectilinear crossing numbers for K5 through K12 are 1, 3, 9, 19, 36, 62, 102, 153, and values up to K27 are known, with K28 requiring either 7,233 or 7,234 crossings. Further values are collected by the rectilinear crossing number project. Interestingly, it is not known whether the ordinary and rectilinear crossing numbers are the same for bipartite complete graphs. If the Zarinkovich conjecture is correct, then the formula for the crossing number of the complete graph is asymptotically correct, that is, as of April 2015, crossing numbers are known for very few graph families. In particular, except for a few initial cases, the crossing number of complete graphs, bipartite complete graphs, and products of cycles all remain unknown. There has been some progress on lower bounds, as reported by de Klerk KL. An extensive survey on the various crossing number variants, including references to recently recognized subtleties in the definition, is available. The Albertson conjecture, formulated by Michael O. Albertson in 2007, states that, among all graphs with chromatic number n, the complete graph not has the minimum number of crossings. 
that is, if the Geist-RT conjecture on the crossing number of the complete graph is valid. Every n-chromatic graph has crossing number at least equal to the formula in the conjecture. It is now known to hold for n16. Complexity. In general, determining the crossing number of a graph is hard. Gary and Johnson showed in 1983 that it is an NP-hard problem. In fact the problem remains NP-hard even when restricted to cubic graphs and to near-planar graphs. More specifically, determining the rectilinear crossing number is complete for the existential theory of the rails. On the positive side, there are efficient algorithms for determining if the crossing number is less than a fixed constant k. In other words, the problem is fixed parameter tractable. It remains difficult for larger k, such as v2. There are also efficient approximation algorithms for approximating CR on graphs of bounded degree. In practice heuristic algorithms are used, such as the simple algorithm which starts with no edges and continually adds each new edge in a way that produces the fewest additional crossings possible. These algorithms are used in the rectilinear crossing number distributed computing project, crossing numbers of cubic graphs. The smallest cubic graphs with crossing numbers chapters 1 to 8 are known. The smallest one crossing cubic graph is the complete bipartite graph K3 3 with six vertices. The smallest two crossing cubic graph is the Peterson graph with 10 vertices. The smallest three crossing cubic graph is the Heward graph with 14 vertices. The smallest four crossing cubic graph is the Mobius Cantor graph with 16 vertices. The smallest five crossing cubic graph is the Pappus graph with 18 vertices. The smallest six crossing cubic graph is the Desargues graph with 20 vertices. None of the four seven crossing cubic graphs with 22 vertices are well known. The smallest eight crossing cubic graphs include the Nauru graph and the McGee graph or cage graph with 24 vertices. In 2009, XOO conjectured that the smallest cubic graph with crossing number 11 is the Coxeter graph. The smallest cubic graph with crossing number 13 is the Tut Coxeter graph and the smallest cubic graph with crossing number 170 is the Tut 12 cage. The crossing number inequality. The very useful crossing number inequality, discovered independently by Ajtai, Schwartel, Newborn, and Simeredi and by Leighton, is as follows. For an undirected simple graph G with n vertices and E edges such that E greater than 7 n we have, the constant 29 is the best known to date, and is due to Ackerman, the constant 7 can be lowered to 4, but at the expense of replacing 29 with the worst constant of 64. The motivation of Leighton in studying crossing numbers was for applications to VLSI design in theoretical computer science. Later, Seckley also realized that this inequality yielded very simple proofs of some important theorems in incidence geometry, such as Beck's theorem and the simaredi trotter theorem, and Tamal Day used it to prove upper bounds on geometric k-sets. For graphs with girth larger than 2R and E4N, Pack, Spencer and Toth demonstrated an improvement of this inequality to proof of crossing number inequality we first give a preliminary estimate. For any graph G with n vertices and E edges, we have to prove this. Consider a diagram of G which has exactly CR crossings. Each of these crossings can be removed by removing an edge from G. Thus we can find a graph with at least E minus CR edges and N vertices with no crossings, and is thus a planar graph. But from Euler's formula we must then have E minus CR 3N, and the claim follows. 3N minus 6 for N3. To obtain the actual crossing number inequality, we now use a probabilistic argument. We less 0 less than p less than 1 be a probability parameter to be chosen later, and construct a random subgraph H of G by allowing each vertex of G to lie in H independently with probability p, 
and allowing an edit G to lie in H if and only if its two vertices were chosen to lie in H. Let A, N H and C R H denote the number of edges, vertices and crossings of H, respectively. Since H is a subgraph of G, this diagram contains a diagram of H, by the preliminary crossing number inequality. We have taking expectations we obtain since each of the n vertices in G had a probability p of being in H we have E n H equals p n. Similarly, each of the edges in G has a probability p2 of remaining in H since both endpoints need to stay in H. Therefore E a equals p2 E. Finally, every crossing in the diagram of G has a probability P4 of remaining in H, since every crossing involves four vertices. To see this consider a diagram of G with CR crossings. We may assume that any two edges in this diagram with a common vertex are disjoint. Otherwise we could interchange the intersecting parts of the two edges and reduce the crossing number by 1. Thus every crossing in this diagram involves four distinct vertices of G. Therefore E C R H equals P4 C R and we have now if we set P equals 4 N E less than 1. We obtain after some algebra a slight refinement of this argument allows 1 to replace 64 by 33.75 for E greater than 7.5 N.